Yeah, okay. Right, so as I was saying, so there is another notion of difference closure. And if you impose certain condition on the ground field and characteristic zero, then you have that the, this stronger notion of difference closure, not only it exists, but it's unique up to isomorphism. So that's what I'm going to talk, to explain to you today. Uh, I, uh, I will hide completely the model theory. And I hope that everything will be clear. And uh, if not, you do ask questions, it will be fine. Okay, so first of all, what's a difference field? For me, it's a field with, it's a commutative field, of course, with an automorphism, okay? So the, that's what usually is called reflexive difference field. It's called difference closed if any system of difference equation with coefficients in your field, which has a solution in a field extending, the field you were starting with, has already a solution in K. Right, so this is, well, this is the normal. Okay, so difference fields do, are contained, any difference field embeds into one which is difference closed, okay? That's no problem. Okay, you are trying to find out if they are sort of smallest ones. So in other words, you, ask, you say that a field L is a difference closure of K if, first of all, it's difference closed, and second, whenever U is difference closed contains K, then L, K embeds into U, okay? Right. No, but no question, right? It's clear. So this is the exact analog of differential closure in the case of difference fields, right? I mean, okay. And it turns out that in characteristic zero, every differential field has a differential closure and it is unique up to isomorphism, all right? Uh, and, well, everybody uses that, frankly. In, incidentally, I'm not sure how useful that result is in t for dif differential fields. I mean, certainly quoted all the time, but I, I'm, I'm sure that many things can be done without using this uniqueness of the differential closure and stuff like this. Okay, let's continue. So there are obvious reasons why a difference field might not have a difference closure. So the first reason is that when you have an automorphism of a field, well, of course it extends to the algebraic closure, right? So, which means that any difference closed algebraic, uh, difference closed field should be algebraically closed. But it might extend in non-isomorphic ways, okay? So the first example, the obvious example, you start with Q, with the rationals. Well, how do you define the automorphism on the algebraic closure. Okay, I may be a bit cheating here because you could consider that this is part of the invariant of your field, okay? So let's fix sigma on the algebraic closure of Q. But let's say now we go to your favorite example, K, which is a C of T, right? Where uh, C, sigma is the identity on, on C and it sends t to qt for q, which is non-zero and not a root of unity, well, then you see automatically that when you add square root of t, well, that you have two different ways of extending sigma, right? So in other words, the isomorphism type of the field, of the difference field c of t does not tell you what happens on c of square root of t, all right? You have two choices. Of course, you have other ways. By the way, I should mention that this example does not work for t goes to t plus one. There is indeed only one way of extending the automorphism to the algebraic closure, up to isomorphism, of course. Good. Right, so there is, let, before I come to the second example, let me tell you something about difference closed fields. When you have a difference closed field, and this is why some people don't like them, is the fact is that the field of 
fixed elements, you know, the subfield of elements which satisfy sigma of x equals x, is not algebraically closed. All right? And the reason is simply because if you look at the equation which says sigma square of x equals x and sigma of x different from x, okay, you can express it as an equation, obviously, this has a solution. So in other words, there is an element which has a bit of size 2 under sigma. And in fact, one can prove, I mean, that was one of the earlier results on these fields, which is that actually the fixed field is what's called pseudo-finite. So logicians will say it's an infinite model of the theory of finite fields. So it is perfect, uh, has absolute gara group Z hat, and it's what's called pseudo-algebraically closed, so which means that every absolutely irreducible variety <coughs> defined over that field F has an irrational point. Okay, so these fields, they are known, they are nice, they are not algebraically closed, but they are almost as nice. So, the second constraint comes from the fact that if the field is not pseudo-finite, well, in a differential closure, it will be pseudo-finite, okay? So you have to add an element, but then there are extremely many ways of embedding your thing in a field in which uh, <coughs> in which the fixed field is to the finite, okay? So that, that means no way. Okay, so that's the second obstacle. So for these two trivial reasons, it is clear that not every difference field has a different closure. Now, let's say that we get rid of these conditions and we we impose that the difference field K is algebraically closed and its fixed subfield is pseudo-finite, okay? So now, what's the question? I mean, can it be that this was the only obstacle? Right. Well, so here the examples, in characteristic P, it's fairly easy to find. Characteristic zero, it's a bit of a mess. I mean, let's put it that way. I, my, the obvious quote-unquote examples I had in mind were not obvious. Well, were wrong, let's put it that way. So in the end, the example I cooked out, it was an existing example, but it's much more uh, complicated. So let's see. So let's see, first of all, some properties of a difference closure. So let's say U is the difference closure of the field K. Then what's happening is there is a property, this is a model theoretic property, which says that if you take a finite tuple of element of U, then its type over K is isolated. Okay, so here I need the blackboard, obviously. So what, notice, let me tell you the, what I'm talking about. So first of all, if I have a set, so I'm working inside a large model, if I have a subset in here, I'm looking at it, what I called ACL of A. This is going to be the smallest algebraically closed difference field which contains A. In other words, I look at A, I, all, I look at all its transforms under sigma, I look at the field it generates and I take an algebraic closure, okay, inside you. Good. Right. So what's happening is that, so, the type of A over K, this will simply correspond, it will be a set of formulas describing the isomorphism type of ACL of Ka over K. All right? So I'm taking the field, the difference field generated by A over K, I look at its algebraic closure, and then I'm, say, I'm describing what does sigma do to that, okay? So of course, you know, this type will contain, for instance, what kind of difference equation with coefficients in K my A will satisfy, okay? So that will 
this would be the quantifier-free part of A over K. But it will also say things about, things about the algebraic closure. Think about my example with sigma of t equals qt. I needed to tell what happens to square root of t, right? Does it go to square root of qt or to minus square root of qt? So these things can be s expressed during our language. So for all intents of purposes, this is an abbreviation of for the isomorphism type of this different sphere, okay? So, to say that the type is isolated is saying that, in fact, I only need finite information about that, about this extension. So I need a finite set of difference equations and inequations, and they will imply this. In other words, any tuple which satisfies these finitely many difference equations and inequations will generate a difference field whose algebraic closure has this. So, for instance, example, assume that k is c. If I look at the equation sigma of x equals x plus 1, as I explained before, it turns out that, wonderful, it tells me everything that happens over the um, algebraic closure of c of t. However, if I look at sigma of t equals qt, no matter how much finitely many information I say, there will be always something missing, okay? So that one will not be isolated, right. Okay, good. <clears throat> so, isolated, finite amount of information tells me everything that happens on the algebraic closure of a, reali of a solution, okay? So that's a very strong property. If you don't have that, then you don't have a difference closure, right? Okay, so let me give you, first of all, the example in characteristic P, which is an easy example. Uh, wait, I went backwards, that's why. Right, so in characteristic p greater than zero, what happens is that actually you do, if you choose well, uh, so you have, you can have interactions between sets which, at, which occurs at a level which is higher. <coughs> okay, right. So I'm looking at two abelian groups. One is defined by the equation sigma of x equals x to the p minus x. The other one, the b, is defined by sigma of x to the p minus sigma of x plus x to the p equals zero. So these are subgroups of the additive groups, okay? They are fine, I mean, you have two sets. I mean, in any, in any difference closed uh, thing, you will have, uh, it will be an fp vector space of uh, infinite dimension, okay? Both of them. And the point is that, actually, so, I mean, if I take these two equations, they completely determine the isomorphism type of the difference field generated by them. However, there is a finite extension of the difference field generated by a, two solution, by a in A and B in B, which is not determined. Namely, it turns out that if you look at the equation x to the p minus x equals a, B. The extension generated by a solution will also contain a solution to the equation x to the p minus x equals sigma of A, B. In other words, the solution is going to be stable under the action of sigma. Now, take a solution, you have P choices for sigma, okay? And, well, it turns out that it, this type of thing will define a non-degenerate bilinear form from A cross P to FP. You have two to the cardinality of A choices, so it cannot be that it's going to be uh, that all these guys, uh, I mean, you make choices, there will obviously be a choice which will be missing in a difference closure of that field, okay. This example actually generalizes to 
uh, higher cardinality uh, to the other notions of kappa closures that I will introduce later. In characteristic zero, it's a bit of a mess. Um, <clears throat> right, so the example we came up with, it, was, uh, it has to do with elliptic curves. So first of all, you fabricate, and then you fabricate a, a um, you fabricate a difference equation which does not have a solution in the algebraic closure of Q with uh, sigma anything, right? With sigma non-trivial. And so that's sort of the hard part, actually. Uh, once you have it, then it comes out that, I mean, once you know that this thing does not have a solution so that it has to be realized by something which is transcendental, then you have earlier results which tell you that knowing what's happening on the difference field, you have two to the LF zero ways of extending it to the algebraic closure, so therefore there won't be a difference closure either. Okay, right. So, but you see it's really an ad hoc uh, example, right? And frankly, uh, <clears throat> right. Good. <laughs> no, I mean, what I'm saying is that you can't find a good set of conditions saying it has no, uh, I mean, we don't know which are the, which are the, uh, the extensions which, which pose problem, okay? This, this, uh, this guy, which I pr is definitely not part of a family, right? So you solve this, are they others? Okay, good. Uh, right. Now, so the idea is what? So basically, why do differential closures exist? It's because the theory is omega stable, okay? So in our case, well, the theory is not omega stable, the theory is what's called super simple. So we get a sort of intuition from logic which says that in the case of super stable theories, you don't have prime models, but you have what's called kappa prime models. So I'm going to tell you here what it is. I'm talking about a regular cardinal. So think of Aleph 1. Okay, Aleph 1, that's the first uncountable cardinal. And I'm saying that a difference field U is Aleph 1 difference closed if every countable system of difference equations which has, with parameters in K, which has a solution in an extension, has a solution in K. All right? So same thing as before, except that before I had finite, a finite system. Here I have a system, countable system. So this will allow me to describe the uh, algebraic closure of a finite set, for instance. I mean, in other words, a, a field which, you know, an, any, the isomorphism type of any uh, countable difference field, all right? There is a notion which works for LF0, which is slightly stronger than the obvious generalization because we are talking about something else. But, okay, which I'm not going to, which is a bit difficult to explain to you. So, then you have the notion of kappa difference closure, which is the obvious one. It has to be kappa difference closed and embed into every kappa difference closed which contains your field. Okay? Good. And the theorem is the following. In characteristic zero, you have, uh, you take an algebraically closed difference field of characteristic zero. You take Aleph one, let's say. You assume that the fixed field F is what we call Aleph one saturated, meaning every countable system of polynomial equations with coefficient in F, which has a solution in a regular extension, has a solution in F, all right? And then the conclusion is that not only a difference closure exists, kappa difference closure exists, Aleph 1 difference closure exists, but in fact it's unique up to isomorphism over K, all right? So how much time do I have? Not that much, right? Ten. Hmm. Eight. Eight. Nine. Right.
Right, so the, uh, there is an analogous, so that's for the logician, analogous for result for LF epsilon saturation. In characteristic P, it definitely doesn't work because you see the example I had be before, right? This, uh, so in the case of a kappa saturated model, right? What will I have? My, uh, my two vector spaces, they will be of cardinality kappa. You have two to the kappa possible bilinear maps, forget it. Cannot, right. Good, so that certainly doesn't exist. Actually, I do conjecture, but I haven't figured out yet the proof. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not going to spend too much time on it because that I think really in characteristic P, you, you really need the guy to be already uh, kappa saturated. I mean, otherwise it won't have the kappa, the kappa difference. It won't be kappa difference cursed, okay? So, Right, so I'm not going to go very much into the proof, I guess. Um, there are several ingredients. I mean, first of all, suppose you, your fixed fields satisfy the right condition, okay? Uh, can you find, I mean, can you find uh, something which is kappa difference closed, which contains your K and uh, which does not increase the fixed field? Yes, okay, so, well, there was a proof of this in Ashordell's thesis without using, when you don't impose saturation. Here it's, uh, it's similar. Uh, otherwise, what you do is that basically you, um, what did I say here? Yes, I redefined what the type is, and I said what the quantifier type is, quantifier free type is, which is uh, just, right, not interesting. Okay, so basically what we are doing is that we want to realize, so think of, you know, my, my types, it's what? It's, inf it's countable system of equations, countably many equations with coefficients in the field, so automatically with coefficients in a countable subfield, all right? And you want to realize them, okay? You want to find a solution. So basically, um, so what it's going to say? It's going to say, for instance, that if it has a solution, then it has infinitely many, because you just add, you know, equations, right? So for instance, uh, when we're talking about LF1 saturation, right? Uh, uh, basically, you will be able to, to find LF1 linearly independent copies of extensions, you know, finitely generated extensions of your point K. I mean, unless, uh, unless they were already generated. So first of all, you notice that if you are LF1 saturated and contain K, then automatically the difference trans, uh, transformal transcendence degree has to be LF1. So what's transformal transcendence degree? You have these elements which satisfy absolutely no difference equation. That's an element which is called that transformally transcendental. There is a notion of transformal transcendence basis. In other words, you take uh, K elements, they satisfy no equations whatsoever, and everybody of the field, of the difference field, is satisfies some transformal, some difference equation over this. Right, so obviously, the transformal transcendence basis has to be cardinality LF1. So if your K was not, did not contain enough of those elements, you just add them, there is a unique way of adding them, everything will be fine. And then you do an analysis of types of the other guys. So the other guys are going to be transformally algebraic. In other words, they are going to, s the difference field they generate is of finite transcendence degree. You have an analysis of them. You have the nice guys which behave almost like if they were stable. And then you have the bad guys which have something to do with the fixed field. And, but then, what happens is that because of our hypothesis on the fixed field, it turns out that when they appear, you can sort of neutralize them because they sort of boil down to 
realizing a finite type. And I guess if you read that, the, the last sentence there, that's what makes the trick. Okay, that's what does the trick. There is a bit of work involved. Okay, um, and right. And I guess the last result I wanted to say is that you care. So first of all, you are going to construct a different, a kappa difference closed field containing k, right? And then you're going to show that it has the following property: that whenever you have a tuple, a finite tuple in your in U, and if you look at the, its type over K, in other words, the isomorphism type of the ACL of K, right, of the, right, then it is actually implied by the isomorphism type of ACL of CA for some countable C containing K. Okay, so that's what I call kappa is uh, aleph one satellite. Okay, and the other thing is I'm going to say is that every sequence of indiscernible over k has length less than or equal to kappa. So what's a sequence of indiscernible? It's a sequence a one, a n, etc., a alpha for alpha less than aleph one in my case, or alpha less than lambda lambda some cardinal, and it has the property that for any n, if you look at the difference field generated by a1 a n over k and look at its algebraic closure, has to be isomorphic over k to the same thing with some other indices where i1 is less than i2, less than i n, less than alpha, okay? That's what it means indiscernible. And it's saying that, in, the, in fact, such a thing, if you can find these elements, then the, the, the length of such a thing is less than kappa, all right? And it comes down from the construction that it exists. And and then you just show that these conditions are enough to, to guarantee uniqueness. Okay. Thank you. Yes. No, I mean, I, you see, there are enough, I mean, what are the examples of non-minimal things, right? Yeah. Is that you have uh, independent, I mean, especially yeah. here, because you see, automatically here, I have, I mean, most types, they will have uh, uncountable sequences of indiscernibles, right? So you can always take out one, you see? So, right. Yeah, when you have the order, but I mean, <laughs> you know, when you have the order, I mean, things are fixed, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs>